Hello YouTube, 22312 here, welcoming you to my latest video. So yeah, this is the first video I've made in some time. I've spent ages and ages just doing nothing on YouTube and just only watching other people's videos. But Let's Plays are pretty good to watch. Well, Injustice came out recently and I thought, why not? It's a good video game. I like fighting, well I'm not good at fighting games, but I like them. I'm now a fan of DC, so why not? I'll make a YouTube video about a DC video game. Three favourite things. So yeah, I made a video. Tough shit. Injustice Summer. That's my first thing on my list that I've got here. Uh, Injustice. It's the latest game by Neverrealm. If you haven't heard of it, you've been living under a rock. It was announced at E3 2012, I think. Maybe 2011. They've been working on it for ages. 24 characters, all pretty good. It's the Mortal Kombat engine that Mortal Kombat ca the makers of Mortal Kombat realised Hey, most of our characters are clones of Scorpion, let's make a video game using decent characters. So they did. But they kept the engine for the actual Mortal Kombat games, they just updated it a bit. So you've got your super meter, if you've played Mortal Kombat before. You can use that for special moves, meter burns. I don't think they'll call meter burns in that, but they are in this. There's special moves which you can use, there's meter burns which make each of those a bit faster, a bit better. There's Clashes, which use a segment of meter, a segment of meter burn to be able to wage us for health and strength. It's hard to explain, really. I don't use it that much, but I know some pros do. Uh, there's combo moves that can be converted into meter burns. It's all very complex. Pros will love it. I don't. It's too difficult. All these super pro people who now to play fighting games will get used to it quickly, even if the timings are a bit dodged compared to other games like Mortal Kombat. Though, it is completely different with the timings. I've not played Mortal Kombat that much, I just know it. So yeah, the gameplay is pretty smooth, even if the timings are a bit dodgy, as I mentioned three times before, I'm running out of things to say. Stages are pretty good, bounces are good, stage transitions are good, they return for Mortal Kombat, for the old Mortal Kombat game that came out in 2011, I think. Except a lot less gory. The specials, they don't have the skull effects anymore, that they thought that would be a bad idea for superheroes. But yeah, speaking of superheroes, there's a superhero story mode which explains why everyone's wearing different costumes. It's an excuse for Never Neverrealm to make costumes called Insurgency and Regime. The idea is Batman is that... Scarecrow and Harley Quinn take... No, wait, Joker and Harley Quinn, why did I say Scarecrow? Joker and Harley Quinn kill Scarecrow and take his venom and all his stuff and his fear gas and toxins and lace it with kryptonite. So they can hypnotise Superman into killing Lewis Lane, who has a bomb planted in her. It's a, it's a rubbish story really, but it's just a way to get Superman against Batman. So yeah, the entire metropolis is destroyed. Lewis Lane's dead. Jimmy Olsen's dead. And that means shit gets real. And Joker's batshit crazy. Well, not Joker. Well, Joker's batshit crazy anyway. He, he destroyed millions and millions of people. Superman's batshit crazy. When Superman gets batshit crazy, you know something's going down. So he starts up the One Earth government in this universe. And he becomes a dictator. He Superman starts up his armies to go against him because he doesn't like having the entire world under a dictatorship. And Superman lifts up Atlantis and puts it in the Sahara. Which is quite funny, really. Basically, the only people who... They, they adv never really advertised the whole thing at first as just their universe and half the characters being Regime and half the characters being Insurgent too, but it's pretty much just everyone against Batman. That's what it ends up being. Joker's got, Joker's got an Insurgency costume even though he died at the beginning. I don't see why that he does. It looks pretty... It's the coolest of the costumes, but I'll be talking about that later. So yeah, the story. It's a little bit flimsy. There's a few silly plot devices to keep the story going. Oh look, we're eating kryptonite. It's going to give us superpowers. Why not? We need excuses to be have the shit beaten out of us by people and still live. Yes, I'm looking at you, Batman. But yeah, that's that's a plot point. It's rubbish. Superman turned evil because of Metropolis exploding. That's a decent enough plot point. I expected it to be worse. Because they've got to have almost every character playable that are relatively popular, they have to have Batman collect people from another universe. While that is a good reference to the multiverse idea that's been happening since Crisis on Infinite Earths brought it back after thinking it was a bad idea to get rid of it, it's a good idea. I like it. 
yeah. So yeah, it's a good idea, really. Damn, I've run out of things to say already. So the story's good. I like it. The fighting's good. I like that as well. The characters are good. I like them as well. Even though there are a few nobodies. That's something I can set on the characters. There's four types of characters in the game. But into two subcategories. There's power characters and gadget characters. Now, power characters will be all about all guns blazing, going in with the muscles, showing how muscular they are. So that'll be your Shazam, your Solomon Grundy, your Superman. Your gadget characters are the ones that use other items to help them or use projectiles. And they're ones like Nightwing, Batman, Deathstroke, possibly Cyborg, I'm not certain. Each of those is set into two different characters, categories of their own. For instance, for power characters, you've got your flying characters and your ground characters. Flying ones enjoy going up into the air to use grapples, while ground ones like bashing people into the ground and stuff like that to start combos. And for the gadget character, you've got acrobats, like Nightwing, who like jumping all over the place and using S screamers and stuff like that, which I'll talk about later. And then there's gadget characters like Batman, who just like getting lots of weapons and special toys and stuff like that. How does he get all these wonderful toys? And they use them to fight. It's pretty cool. So yeah, Aquaman is a decent enough... I'll go through him in alphabetical order, because I've got me on the list. Aquaman's a decent enough character, Neverrealm just wanted to make him look not stupid for once, and they did a good job, he actually plays pretty decent, though his, insurg his regime insurgency costume is a bit rubbish, it's basically just him with a beard. Ares is okay, his, in his insurgency costume again is rubbish, it's just him with horns, two more horns really. Ares has some good teleports, he has some good weapons, his special Aquaman's special ability just to get stronger. I'll, I'll not mention ones that just make people stronger, because there's a lot of them. Ares' is special is that he throws a weapon at someone, at the opponent. And that's a good idea, I like it. It suits him very well, just throwing re one random weapons at people. So yeah, Ares has some good linkable combos. Bane. Bane is a good enough character, I like him. I like his Nightfall costume. I'll mention extra costumes as they come by. It's a good costume. Uh, he's got some decent enough combos, even though he's relatively slow. I don't like him because I play well with people who can link together projectiles and get up close and personal. That's one of my favourite characters, Deathstroke, but I'll get to that later. So Bane's relatively slow, he's kind of really powerful, so he's, he does short combos, but they're all really powerful. Batman uses his gadgets a lot, as you would expect. Everyone's going to play as him. I don't like him that much. It's okay. There's pe there's characters that are worse, but yeah. Black Adam. No, oh, Batman's specialty is just shoot project projectiles, by the way. Black Adam's is to put electricity around his body, which means people can't actually start decent enough combos without getting injured by him. It's a decent enough way to stop cheap combos, and it's a decent enough character trait, but it doesn't suit him that well. So, Black Adam has some decent enough combos, some decent enough picks, he just can't be bothered with anything, from what it seems. That's the difference between him and Shazam. Shazam looks like he's trying in battle. So that's Black Adam. Also, why is why is his regime costume bold? Who thought that was a good idea, never well. Get that person and fire them. Catwoman. She's got some decent enough combos. Her special is to chain some scratches together. I've not really played as that much, it's been about five minutes. Because she's playable in story mode. So that's decent enough. She has some decent enough combos. She can link together, them together well. Her super is relatively easy to sort out and get someone in a combo with. Cyborg. Cyborg's self-repair is crap. Don't use it. It's rubbish. He just stands about and recharges. And if you play as a decent enough person, they'll just be able to get you out of their self-repair straight away before you can actually recharge anything. It leaves you vulnerable way too much. So yeah, that's Cyborg. He has some decent. He has he has two decent grapples that he can use to get away from the opponent. Uh, Deathstroke, my favourite character. Some very very good gun and sword moves. He's been complained about online because of people just spamming his guns. I don't do that. I link together. I'm going to try and practice some bounce moves with him. I've only been playing for about a week and I play about half an hour a day or something. I've beaten story mode and battle mode and now I'm just practicing and practicing mode with Deathstroke. So yeah, he's good. Uh, Doomsday, he's okay. He has some decent charges. He's another power character. Flash, he's fast. What do you expect? He's the Flash, the fastest thing alive. 
He goes really fast. His speed zone is good for linking combos together. Green Arrow. I like that they actually put his costume from Arrow into the game. That's a pretty good idea of theirs. Even though it takes too long to get the costume, because Neverrealm haven't been sending out emails to people who actually got the costume. Uh, Green Lantern, he's decent. Not much else that can be said. He's got the imagination. His, his ring is powered so he can imagine anything in existence ever, but he spends all his time creating missiles and guns and big bats. Don't judge him. He's, he went suicidal and created Coast City and killed everyone. I'll talk about that in the costume section later. Uh, Harley Quinn. She's how you'd expect. I've not played as her, so I don't know about her. Hawk girl, she's decent. She can fly about all over the place. I also haven't played her, if I'm quite honest. Joker, he mixes Joker Venom moves where he kicks him across the opponents, just mildly poison him, with some of his crowbar moves. It's a good reference to Death in the Family, the whole crowbar battering someone to death thing. Because in the comics, he battered Jason Todd to death with a crowbar to kill him. By the way, Jason Todd's Joker. I'll talk about him later as well. Killer Frost, she's okay. She's relatively weak, she uses ice combos, stuff like that. Lex Luthor, he's strong, he's good, he uses lots of projectile stuff. But I think most of his orbitals and lasers and stuff like that will come in absolutely piss useless when it actually comes to playing the game properly online with other people, but I've not because I've only been playing a main story where characters don't attack that much. Have I mentioned that medium mode characters are really weak and pathetic until you get up to Superman in battle mode? Then he absolutely rapes you. That happens. Uh, Nightwing, he mixes from a screamer to bow staff, and it's hard to do, and you can't really do it that well, but it's good enough. There's some pretty inter interesting combos on betting people have been able to do with it. Yeah, but also the character traits are pretty rubbish, if I'm quite honest. They've tried to make them out as making each person unique, but when you get into battle, most of them are going to be useless. Deathstrokes is like guns that become unblockable, which can start off combos relatively well. Most people are either getting stronger, getting unblockable, or getting chain combos together, as I'll mention later with Sol and Grundy. Now, what was I saying? I digress. Raven. Yeah, Raven. She's rubbish. I don't like her. Some people might like her. I don't. I don't like how she's belling on her costumes, despite the fact she was in the Teen Titans. Shazam. I don't see why Shazam and Black Adam are pretty similar, but they play differently enough to have different fans of each, if you know what I'm saying. Shazam especially just to become more powerful, become unblockable. Sinestro. Sinestro's pretty decent, it's completely different to Green Lantern. Green Lantern goes mostly for constructs that can be used as projectiles, Sinestro goes for stuff to strengthen himself. Whether it's chains, or whether it's big claws on his back, or whether it's big hammers, or or hatchets or stuff like that. He doesn't go for guns though, he doesn't like guns. So he's a decent character. I don't know why he's super, his character trait is because I've not used him that much yet, but I'm going to. Solomon Grundy. His special is really, really useful. He chains combos together using Circle. He can pretty much just pick a person up if they're stunned or anything and just throw them about the place for about a 10 link combo if you're good enough with him. You can do it as many times as you want as well, no recharge time. It's going to take a long time to get used to, and it's really slow to start, and most of his other moves are complete rubbish, but as soon as you do get to know it, he's going to be a force to be reckoned with. Superman. He takes time to get used to. Really slow character, almost fights as if he's a drunkard. But when you get used to him, he can be pretty decent. And Wonder Woman, last person. She can sift between a whip and a sword, but again, just like Nightwing, it takes ages to do, so no one will do it. But it's decent enough for people who want two different play styles at the same time. The characters that I like the most are the ones that go between projectiles and getting up close, which will be Deathstroke, Green Arrow a little bit, uh, Sinestro, and possibly Superman. I didn't like him at first, but I like him now because his combos, while they are slow, once you get them done, they can do about 25% damage, which is good for me. With Deathstroke, I can do several 21 to 22s just by linking to the other wall bouncers and contract killer. People who played as him will know what I'm talking about. So, yeah. One thing I don't like, though, is the costumes. They've not got enough of them. And the ones they have got on U52, I mean, they could have just... Well, the regime costumes first, the regime and insurgency. They're rubbish, all of them. 
The only ones that are decent are the ones that they should have kept in, which is Superman and his dictatorship shoulder pads and chiseled chin. And Deathstroke's maskless one that makes him look like a hero, and uh, that's about it. All the other ones are crap. Batman's... Batman, they should have just left his new 52 one in, because his new 52 one and the insurgency one look really similar. Or of the mask and the break apart bit and the symbol on his chest with the bat symbol. But yeah, all the other ones should have been got rid of and they should have focused more on comic book characters. They don't need as many new 52 versions as they do. They're too similar to normal except they've got less black lines on them and more streaks and stuff like that. It makes it look more like they're wearing a, one, a onesie than an actual piece of armour, which is what I liked about the game as much as it is. They shouldn't have been so faithful to the original costumes. They're good, but they're not really good. I would have preferred if they stuck with old costumes. With the old costumes, we have lots of armour versions. The costumes that I do like are all of them. They're all really good. Even Flashes. Even Batman's, in, even Batman's 52 one's pretty good. But they've not balanced out the costumes enough. Batman has too many, everyone else has too few. I mean, Batman has seven so far. And that's including the Flashpoint one, which had just been announced. And they're all too tricky to get. We don't have GameStop here in Britain. How the fuck am I supposed to get my Russian Superman? Yes, I know it's Red Sun, it's Elseworlds, I don't care. No, neither do you, don't lie. So yeah, costumes are pretty good. I like them. Joker's got some decent ones. His, his Arkham one's different enough to be decent. Killer Frost hasn't got any. Deathstroke's got too few, though they have announced his Teen Titans one that looks pretty good. Cyborg's Teen Titan one just looks stupid and they should have settled with cartoon show Teen Titans because it's not stupid. They've got to they've got to find a good in-between between unrealistic and staying faithful to the comics. Because having something that's too faithful to the comics will just end up with them looking stupid compared to other characters and will just end up with the animated series Batman from Arkham City again where it just looks stupid and it's just a novelty character. But Batman's Batman Beyond costume, that was a good, not a very nice, fateful costume, and it's really good. It's just a shame you have to play the iOS version for it, but the iOS version is pretty good, so what am I complaining about? So yeah, the costumes are good. The costumes are wanted. Well, they've got Bane's Nightfall costume in there for eight of the iOS games, so they should have had Batman's Asriel costume, the Asriel War during Nightfall, which is kind of like Batman, but robotic. They could have taken out his new 52 costume in the surgeon scene and replaced him with... Let's see... Jason Todd's Batman costume with the guns and shit, and we could have put Jason Todd's voice actor in there. And... Uh, well, that's it, he didn't need that many costumes. For Deathstroke, they could have gone for more cartoon Teen Titans one as well as the normal Teen Titans one. For Green Lantern, they could have gone for his Parallax costume from Emerald Twilight. That would have been very nice. Anyway, if you don't know any of these comics, go Google them. I'm already running short on time because I'm going to try and make this as short as I can. Uh, Solomon Grundy could have has too many costumes. Why have they made a Boss Grundy costume? For Sinestro, they could have made an Orange Lantern Scarecrow costume. No, not Orange Lantern. Orange Lantern Lex Luthor and Yellow Lantern Scarecrow they should have had, which are from... They're also from Blackest Night. They basically had to make a, a lantern of every colour to face against the Black Lantern Corps. So they made several people into Lantern members for a while. And it basically caused lots of shit when Scarecrow went psychopathic because he could feel fear for the first time. That happened. So yeah, there's some decent costumes, there's a lot of others. Basically just take costumes that are different enough from the comics and put them into costumes and you've got what I'd like. So the costumes are good, and they're the costumes I want. The stages are good as well, they're very nice. We don't need any DLC stages though, they're good enough as is. It's, just, it's not really that interesting. But we should have had transitions optional in Atlantis and Ferris Aircraft. I mean, they complain that there's no decent transitions they could have. Couldn't they just have Black Manta invading Atlantis? Couldn't they have the Star Sapphire that's the head of Ferris Aircraft Industries? Couldn't they have the planes that are in the background fly off into the air? Couldn't they have a battle on the runway outside? They shouldn't have just had it as one stage for both of them. At least... It's good enough just having them deactivatable, or just able to be turned off, sorry, a bit of a brain fart there. Yeah, just, if they just left it so it could be turned off, that would be decent enough. But, yeah. One thing I do like 
are the DLC characters. They're going to be very interesting. There's two characters been announced so far, and two that are rumoured, because we're going to be having four characters. If you buy the season pass as well, you get the Flashpoint costumes, except for Flashpoint Batman, which you apparently have to buy separately, which is the only decent Flashpoint costume so far, apart from Deathstroke Pirate Edition. <coughs> yes, I do know what it is, because yes, I have heard about the comics in White and Gotham. So, DLC characters. So far, they've announced Lobo, the Kazarian, I think I pronounced that right, who is a psychopathic mercenary. And they've announced Batgirl with weird claws because they have to make every character different in some sort of way. Because apparently they do. I thought they were going to be too samey to Batman and Superman, but uh, never realm of attack. But never realm of talented at making characters different. There's two other characters that have been rumoured because someone's apparently found them inside the files for the game. And they're General Zod and Scorpion from Mortal Kombat. I can see why they put them in. General Zod would be to advertise Man of Steel, the latest film for Superman, which is basically Dark Knight Rises, but for Superman. And they'd put Z and they'd put Scorpion in because he's Neverrealm's poster boy, isn't he? So, they're not the people I'd want in. If they're going to make a General Zod costume, they've got four choices. Either the trench coat bound badass that's sometimes been in the comics. The General Zod from Polzekistan, I think I pronounced that right again, in badass red arm, which is the one I want. The one that's basically wearing a black version of Superman's costume with a Z on it, which would be stupid and there's no reason for it to be in, apart from the bonus costume. And then there's the one from Man of Steel, which is the hot world one where it looks like he's wearing Dr. Octopus's arms around his chest. Which is relatively cool, but I prefer the one with massive red armour because no one's red in the game, but a lot of people wear black. It's a bit a change. Now, Scorpion shouldn't be in it. He's, he d doesn't fit. I can see how Freddy Krueger fits in Mortal Kombat as a joke character, but I can't see how Scorpion would fit in Injustice anywhere. He's too violent, he's too gory. There's no one quite that violent and gory in the game. Blood's fake in Injustice, so what are you going to do? What, what, how would Scorpion play? Basically, the main decent thing about him is how ridiculously violent and gory he is, but they've got to get rid of that, if he is in it, at least. It's pretty likely they're in it because they also said Batgirl and Lobo were going to be in, and they've been announced so far. So yeah, they're probably going to be in it. But I'm not happy. I would prefer other characters. I would like Martian Manhunter in it just to shut up the Justice League fanboys wanting the Legendary 7 in the game. Yes, I am talking about the animated version, not the normal version. Because I watched the animated version, but I haven't read many Justice League comics. Uh, I'd like Hunter Zolomon in it, just to see how different he would be to normal Flash. Uh, let's see. The Spectre, he would be pretty cool in it. Because he's the divine, the divination of Wrath given by the Presence into the world. He would have some very nice magic combos. Speaking of magic, Zatanna, she would be good. Mixing together some of Joker's gimmicky card tricks that he does in some of the mini games in the main story and mixing them with magic that Raven does, even though I don't like her because she's too slow. So that would be cool. Uh, let's see. Other people. There's lots of really cool characters that could be in it. Well, that dead shot, he would be cool. Mixing together some of his explosive lasers with his normal laser shots with some Deathstroke's guns with some of Deathstroke's guns and pistols, that would be cool for him. And then his super would be summoning the entire of the Suicide Squad. Uh, Ocean Master or Blank Black Manta as one of... to make an Aquaman villain in the game. That would be pretty neat, just having one of them in it. Uh, they should have had more references in it, at least there's that. Some characters, just the little references, they could have had Ocean Master or Black Manta as I mentioned, they could have had some more of the Lantern Corps. Uh, Atrocitus, he would be a good DLC character, because he's powered by Rage, which would make him a lot more violent than Sinestro or Green Lantern. Sinestro is different enough to Green Lantern as is, they could make Atrocitus into a character. They could even make Killerorg into a DLC character if they wanted, and I wouldn't mind. Could make a Manhunter into a character, but that would be a bit rubbish. Uh, the Metal Men, that would be cool. Have the Metal Men tagging one by one, kind of like the Pokemon trainer in Super Smash Bros. Brawl. And you would switch between the each have different abilities, but they'd each be relatively weak. Make tagging quick enough so you can start combos with them. The final smash, the the super move, sorry, final smash is from Smash Bros. The fan, the special move for them would be that the metal men merge together to make the uber at the metal alloy man. I think that's what it's called. It isn't. And then merge them together like that so you can crush them. 
That would be a cool person to play as. Uh, I've said Deadshot already, haven't I? Uh, Jason Todd. Uh, as I was saying before, Red Hood. He got killed, then he brought, got brought back to life by a Lazarus Pit. One of Raisha's things. It merged his mind with Raisha's. So now he has a different worldview where he basically hates Batman and he wants to combat justice by killing everyone. Oh, my computer's frozen for a minute there, sorry about that. There's probably going to be a bit of lag on that bit of the video, possibly, maybe. Uh, let's see. I'm going to... Uh, I've run out of people I can think of. What about... They should have had some Watchmen characters in there. Hood of Justice. Well, Hood of Justice is a bit obscure. He could be a background character. So could Metropolis Man in a Watchmen stage. That's one stage I would like. So yeah, Raw Sketch, Dr. Manhattan, Silk Spectre, all those people could be in the game. As a DLC pack, as costumes, as whatever, I don't care, give me Watchmen. Uh, as a joke character, there's a lot of there's a lot of Vertigo Comics characters that could be good, speaking of Watchmen. I would say V for Vendetta would be the best because he could mix his grapples with his slightly violent takedowns and gambits and stuff like that, and his special would be lots of explosions just like at the end of the film for V for Vendetta. I've not read the comics, but I've heard they're really interesting. Well, the idea about the Vendetta is it's infinite amount of people. It could be anyone in the universe ever because he's never revealed his identity. And he's, he's, when, he, when people are interviewed about the identity of V, the people who made the comics said that he's anyone and no one. He's just an idea. That makes him perfect to just have millions of V for Vendettas. It's like the end of the film. There were just millions of people wearing the Guy Fawkes costume. That would be a good finisher as well, along with explosives and stuff like that. They could have one of them as like, his ending scene and one of them as the actual super move. Damn, I'm out of things to say. Well, this is going up to YouTube. This is Hunty2312 signing out and this is a video on Injustice. If you want my review on it, it's a 24 out of 10. It's really good. Go and buy it. Goodbye.